um, it's a reconstruction team, so we have teachers and nurses and do all those types of things. We try and use our military capability, which is our regular army there, to allow other people to carry out that work. So that's what we've been doing since 2003. When we sent the SAS back in 2009, they, they stood alongside a group called the Crisis Response Unit. Now, the Crisis Response Unit are part of the Afghan National Police, and there is about just under 300 of them, 285, I think. They are there to be effectively the SAS when we've gone home. So there's no point in us doing all that work for them. What we're trying to do is train them yes. and get them ready because when everybody leaves, someone needs to be able to protect that environment for the Afghan government. OK, so why, why would the government not be more upfront and say they will be in combat roles? Well, because that wouldn't necessarily achieve our objectives. So the objective of all of the NATO and ISAF forces is to build up the Afghan National Police and the Afghan National Army so that when we all leave Afghanistan, and the, and the plan is obviously around about 2014 to be able to try and do that, mm. to be in a position where they can look after themselves. So if you look at Iraq as probably some sort of example of that, it's not that there aren't instances and, and insurgent activity and all those sorts of things still carry on in Iraq. There's still bombings and things that take place yeah. there. But no one's seriously, I think, thinking that the government will fall because it has its own capability to look after itself. OK, so going back to Afghanistan, there, yeah. it, there's already talk of the tempo of the Taliban's urban terrorist operations being upscaled. Yeah. We could see a significant increase in terrorist activity. So there could be yeah. more of these situations before March. Well, I think what's happening is it's changing. Mm -hmm. So there's a season, the sort of typical the summer season is where the insurgent activity is, is heightened and then over the winter, so we're coming into the winter season actually, it tends to, um, to recede. So what's happening, um, this is the height of it, what's happening at the moment, we think anyway, is that the insurgents are trying to change their activity a little bit. So they were planting a lot of these, um, these IEDs, these bombs at the side of the road. I mean, they're still doing a bit of that, but they now seem to be doing high profile things in Kabul as right, one like example. Right, like attacking the British Council. Yep, and it's not, it's Continental Hotel, and that's all about make as much noise as you possibly can and make sure that people know that you're there. Now, we know that the soldiers and our involvement in Afghanistan is, is good for international goodwill. The soldiers, the SAS themselves, want to be there. They yes. want to work. What about leaving them after March? What about continued involvement? Yeah. So, you know, the final decision of them coming home has to be made, mm. and if we're the government post-November 26, then we'll make that decision. But my preference and my expectation is they will come home okay. in March. They will have been there for two and a half years. So when we first deployed them, we deployed a unit of about 80. Um, now there are about 35. There's different component parts, mm -hmm. but roughly about 35. And you'd like to see them come home? Yes, because they're a small... They're, they're, they're the best in the world and they're a brilliant team, but they're small and they need to regroup in my view. Okay.